everybody, it's Lo and welcome back to my channel, Lo Without Limits. In this video, I'm going to share with you the top foods to fight inflammation. So if you want to see that, then just keep watching. If you've ever injured yourself or gotten sick, a little bit of inflammation is good to help our body recover from whatever it is that we're dealing with. Of course, to get your bone to heal, you need a little bit of inflammation to protect it. And if you're feeling sick, a little bit of inflammation will help get rid of whatever the virus or bacteria you're dealing with is. However, if this inflammation goes on for too long, it can actually have negative health consequences on our body. Too much inflammation gone unmanaged over time it can lead to destruction and injury of our organs and our joints. It can also lead to chronic diseases such as cardiovascular disease, arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, obesity, and more. Long-term inflammation occurs because of excess weight, stress, eating foods that your body personally is sensitive to, as well as any underlying autoimmune diseases or any environmental factors that your body is reacting to. And again, a little bit of inflammation reacting to whatever this stressor is, isn't a bad thing if you are allergic to something in the air or to something that you ate. Having a small inflammatory response is good, but again, it's when that goes on for too long that it can begin to wreak havoc. So before you go to pop an ibuprofen over and over again, which is not good for your body for various other reasons. Here are some foods that you can incorporate to help one, lower inflammation, and two, just make you feel better overall. The first category of foods is getting healthy fats in. Getting healthy fats also helps balance out the ratio of omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acids, which is really important for helping reduce inflammation. And different high fat, healthy fat foods include extra virgin olive oil, avocados, fish, fatty fish, such as salmon, mackerel, tuna, sardines, which are also really high in DHA and EPA, which are really important essential fatty acids that your body needs, as well as different nuts and seeds, such as pumpkin seeds, almonds, and walnuts, which are also just really satiating and make you feel a lot better too. So not only are these foods delicious, but they're also great for reducing inflammation. And if you wanna know about some other healthy high fat foods, I have a video that I did from a few years back it's a little old, but I'll have it linked down below of just the best healthy high fat foods that you can incorporate into your diet. If you are a fruit fan like me, berries are the best fruits that you can have, not only because they have a lower sugar content in comparison to other fruits, but they're just jam packed with antioxidants. So blueberries, raspberries, strawberries, but of course, probably the best, like most antioxidant packed berry is blueberries. Just a handful of them has so many antioxidants, so many other nutrients, and they're just so good at fighting inflammation because oxidative stress and antioxidants are a result of inflammation and just lowering all of that helps your body relax and be in a better state where it doesn't need to always be inflamed in order to heal itself. Berries are just also a great option to include into your diet because they are a nice sweet treat. So you can have them with a handful of nuts. So you get your healthy fats in, get your sweet treat in. You can sweeten up your breakfast with some berries. They're just a really good option to be able to satiate a sweet tooth if you have one while getting all of the nutrients and vitamins that you can get out of a fruit. Other great anti-inflammatory foods are different ingredients that you can include to probably every single meal or almost every single meal at least, and they are also jam-packed with phytonutrients, which you know is super important from my Eat Your Colors video, which everybody's watched, obviously. But these include onion, which are full of quercetin, which is really great as an anti-inflammatory, especially in red onions, much more full of that quercetin than white ones, although white ones also have it, and they're all equally delicious, as well as garlic, which is like anti-everything. It's anti-inflammatory, antifungal, antiviral, antibacterial, but is pure deliciousness. And of course, ginger, which has been used for generations across the world for its anti-inflammatory properties and also for helping ease an upset tummy if you ever have one. Another group of inflammation fighting foods are cruciferous vegetables, which I also absolutely love. I think they're so delicious. And not only are they also full of fiber, fiber is important, but they also help remove toxins and waste out of your body so you can feel better. And cruciferous veggies include Brussels sprouts, broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, kale, and they are all delicious. However, haters of this food will be like, they smell, Brussels sprouts smell. Have you ever tried to cook cauliflower? Sometimes it smells. And I agree, sometimes it does smell. And that smell is actually coming from the compound sulforaphane, which 
smells like sulfur and it's such a great anti-inflammatory compound because it helps reduce the amount of cytokines in your body and increased cytokines are a main leader and cause of inflammation and again having cytokines is good these are little cells that are sent up by your immune system when there's an invader and the cytokines are going to go get rid of it or they help with an antihistamine or a histamine response. If you eat something that you're allergic to or you're allergic to something in the environment, it helps get rid of it. It also just produces inflammation if you injure yourself. So having these is not a bad thing, but when your body is just reacting to nothing or it's overreacting or sending out too many cytokines, that's when it leads to that chronic inflammation. So having these cruciferous veggies is really good to reduce those cytokines. That way you can reduce inflammation as well. Other antioxidant and therefore anti-inflammatory herbs that you can include into your diet are turmeric which is great especially when you add it with black pepper because that curcumin in it is really good at fighting inflammation as well as rosemary thyme and oregano all of which I have on my little patio downstairs and really quickly just some foods to avoid if you don't want to deal with excess inflammation is anything that's overly processed or processed and refined carbs such as just white bread and starchy overly processed breads that you find on groceries store aisles as well as any bad fats such as canola oil vegetable oil or fake butters or margarines like I can't believe it's not butter it's not butter reducing soda and excess sugar and also reducing or if you can completely cutting out fried foods because they're often not using really good oils when you're just getting it from a restaurant or a fast food place especially a fast food place and many times they're often reusing those oils instead of changing them out as often as they should they just reuse them and reheat them which just makes them super toxic and not good for you so it's not necessarily the food that's fried that's bad for you it's the oils in the process of frying them that just makes them super bad and just inflammation bombs. Overall, I feel like this is a pretty easy and delicious list of things to incorporate in order to fight inflammation, as well as a small little list of things to cut out or even just avoid and reduce in order to feel better in the long run. So there you have it. Those are the best inflammation fighting foods. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, comment down below, which is your favorite and what else you want to see here on my channel. And while you're there be sure to subscribe i upload a new video every wednesday so until the next one thanks for watching